morning, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to see the sun out again after several days of cloudiness and dampness. I'm ready to rejoice and praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. I'm ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. Won't you join me? If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, oh, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got pain. He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old life. We've all run to things we know just aren't right. Oh, there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. Oh, if you feel lost, my God, he's a way maker. If you need freedom. Savior, he's a chain breaker. Amen. Amen. Praise you may be God. seated, everyone. Hallelujah. He's a chain breaker. Amen. You may Amen. be seated. And yes, he is. Praise God. Father, we thank you so much for your presence that we sense in our midst because you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you'd have your way in our midst, Lord. Let none leave the same we came this morning. Because all of us, Lord, whether we want to admit it or not, we're in desperate need of you. And we thank you, Lord, that you're always there, that your ear is bent low, your hands are extended towards us always, that we have access to you at any time. So, Lord, we just want to give you praise and glory this morning. We also, Lord, want to pray for our missionaries. And, Lord, we pray for the missionary Glenn. I hope I say his last name right, Herthwick. Lord, missionary, Lord, to uh, Asia, East Asia. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you would just uh, bless this man. Lord, I, I ask, oh God, that you would uh, minister, Lord God, through him. Lord, that souls would get saved, lives would get touched in a mighty way. Lord, keep the hedges about him. Lord, uh, protect him. Lord, as, as he, uh, Lord, uh, brings forth your word. So, Lord, we just want to give you praise this morning. We want to give you glory and all God's children said. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Amen. Lord. Amen. Hey, before we begin to worship, why don't you turn and greet someone. Welcome them to church today. It's great to have everybody here. We're going to have a wonderful time. It's a special Amen. Sunday. It's Children's Sunday. Well, glory. We worship you, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. 
Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
our sacrifice of all. Yes, we do. We live to you our sacrifice of praise. Yes, Lord.
thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We serve a great God. We need your touch today, oh God. We praise you, Lord, for who you are. Just for who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Oh, because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and I'll say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace. And I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give. Because of who you are, because of who you are, I give you praise. I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. And this is who he is. Jehovah Jireh. My provider. Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom. You are my prince of peace. And I worship you. Yes, I worship you because, oh Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. my provider God reign in victory because of what he's done for me I can come before his presence with praises on my lips you to remain in an attitude of worship as you take your seats this morning. We're going to move into a time of worship. 
in which we come to the Lord for communion together as a body of believers. We do this in unity as a body in order to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. I'm going to ask Pastor Dick to come and the ushers to come who are going to be handing out communion today. Here at Riverside, we have an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of any church to take communion with us, any particular church or this church or any denomination. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then you can have communion with us because we're still part of the same family. If you have never given your life to Jesus, I would encourage you not to take communion because the Bible says that those that take the communion unworthily are guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood. But if you've never given your life to Jesus, you can do that right now. All you need to do is believe on him, give your life over to him and say, Jesus, I'm turning away from the old life I lived, and I'm going to follow you just because of who you are and what you've done for me on the cross. Jesus' body was broken and his blood was shed upon the cross. And so that's why we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ to remember what he's done. I ask that you would hold on to the communion elements until we all partake together. There are two lids on the communion, one on the top to get the uh, a wafer of bread, and then a second one underneath to get to the juice below. <laughs> Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw
Paul was writing a letter to his friends in a church in a, in a city called Corinth. And they weren't doing communion the right way. They were just eating for the sake of eating, drinking the, the cup for the sake of drinking. And Paul chastised them. That means he spoke pretty hard to them. And this is what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He said, I have already told you what the Lord Jesus did on the night that he was betrayed. And it came from the Lord himself that he took some bread in his hands. Then after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Eat this and remember me. Pastor Dick, would you pray over the, the bread? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for your son and the perfect sacrifice that was made on the cross. Lord, that... By doing that, Lord, that we could, all of us, every one of us, could be reconciled to you if we believe on you. So, Lord, you've paid the price. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this that you would love even your enemies? But, Lord, we want to thank you for a perfect sacrifice that could set us free from the bondage and the penalty of sin. So we just want to give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake of the broken bread together. Thank you, Jesus. The body of Christ broken for us. The Apostle Paul continued in that letter to his friends in Corinth. And Paul says this, after the meal... Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands and said, This is my blood, and with it God makes his new agreement with you. Drink this and remember me. The Lord meant that when you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you tell about his death until he comes. Pastor Dick, would you pray over us before we partake of the cup? Once again, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for your shed blood. And Lord, we understand that only your blood your blood could wash away sin. Thank you once again for your great love for us. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's partake of the cup together. Mm. Draw me nearer Nearer, blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding Hallelujah. Thank you. I sense this presence in the house. Do you? Amen. He's here. He's here. He inhabits the praises of his people. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, we always make time for prayer and the people who have a need. And uh, right now, if you, uh, whatever your need is, we know that God, uh, there's nothing impossible with God. Amen. And that prayer moves the hand of God. So if you have a need today, whatever it may be, a, a physical illness, a financial need, or, or you know, you've got a broken heart, <laughs> lost a loved one, or, you know, whatever, just so much. But I'm so thankful that God can meet. He's, that's what he said, he would provide every need. So you, if you have a need this morning, you're welcome to come. Uh, could I have the prayer team to come? And uh, these precious folk will... Uh, agree with you and pray with you and uh, if it's physical illness it will anoint you with oil uh, but just going to believe together that God will uh, meet your need, amen, so if you'll come and just look uh, this is a time for you, God always has time for you, amen so uh, we'll come you know, and if you want to just come to the altar and, and uh, just to talk to the Lord about it, that's fine also but uh, <coughs> please come amen
We believe in the power of prayer. Amen? Praise God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad he conquered the grave? Aren't you glad he rose again? And because he rose again, we're going to rise again. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give him glory in the house. Come on, church. <laughs> Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Praise God. We'd like to welcome any new folk this morning here for the first time. Anybody here this morning for the first time? Anyone at all? Pardon me? Where? Oh, there we go. Okay. Praise the Lord. Jimmy, is it? Good to have you with us this morning, Jimmy. See, we got a cup uh, and uh, our daily bread for you. And this, is there some Swiss chocolate in there, too, or something? Pastor Dick, right. Jimmy and I went to college together. Oh, you okay. Praise so the Lord. nobody talked to him afterwards about anything that happened in college. You I, mean that he could squeal on you? Or I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's a good friend from college, and we're yes, well, blessed to see him today. Praise God. You're just passing through, visiting? Or? Yeah, man. It's good to have you with us this morning. Praise God. Give him another, another hand of welcome. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I got nothing on this one, so I'm going to need to borrow yours. Sorry. Well, it is Children's Sunday. We're excited to have uh, our kids with us throughout the service today. Uh, and uh, we're going to have some ministry from uh, some of our, our kids today. And first, I would like to invent, uh, invent, invite Ariel Adekeja to come. And she's going to give us a scripture, perhaps. Come on, Ariel. Here you go. You look very nice today. Hi, church. My name is Ariel Adakaja. I'm five years old, and I have some Bible verses to share with you. Second Timothy 1, verse 7. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> no fear from her today as she got up there. Amen. 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 Hey, we're going to continue to worship the Lord this time with our, with our tithes and our offerings. You know, it's October 31st, which I know is Halloween, but it is also the, what we call Reformation Day, because it was on October 31st that Martin Luther uh, pounded his 95 theses onto the door at the church in Wittenberg, Germany, and he had a lot of complaints about the way things were going on in church. One of his complaints was the way that they raised the money. Instead of, uh, uh, in order to raise money, if, if you gave a certain amount of money, they would take some of your sins away, and you wouldn't have to spend as much time in purgatory. Or if you, had, if you gave such and such a money, then your mom or your dad, who were already dead in, 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 half, in purgatory, well, they'd shave some years off for them. And Martin Luther did not like this at all. We shouldn't be raising money by people feeling guilty about their sins. We raise money because we, we love Jesus, and Amen. we want to follow him, and we want to listen to him and his example, and we want, to, uh, we want to be able to reach the Merrimack Valley for Jesus Christ. We want to be able to send missionaries around the world. We give because we are part of something bigger than just my, ourselves, bigger than just our families, bigger than even just our individual church, we are part of the worldwide church of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a, there's a church down the road in, in Haverhill, and they called me last night, and they said, Pastor Dan, we're out of communion cups. Can you give us like 50 of your communion cups? I said, brother, come right on over. Will he pay you back? I'm like, no, you're not going to pay me back because we're part of the same church. We're doing this together. We're having communion together tomorrow. 
So we are part of a family, and that is why we give. We give because we are part of a family. We're something bigger than ourselves. We're going to give because God has asked for it, and God loves us. So let's pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your, your touch upon our lives, the, the move of the Holy Spirit that we've already felt today. I ask, Lord, that you would give us uh, a just a divine insight, Lord, into uh, uh, how you want us to live our lives and, and follow through with the, uh, with, with the instructions that you give to us. Lord, there are our hearts, we're not perfect. And God, there are times that we are down, but today, as we give, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Let us give with gladness, grateful hearts for who you are and what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I begin the song, feel free to come down to the ushers who are going to be down here with the, the baskets and give your offering. Saved from sin, Jesus, Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross, where He took. Yes, come on, church. Oh, glory to His name. I'm singing our glory to His name. Well, glory, glory to His name. There love the way some of you are coming down with a little two-step. Glory. It's a joy. Amen. I said it's a joy in your heart. Glory to God. Praise his name. And that, listen, church, this ain't going to cost you nothing. The joy that you have doesn't come from the world. That's right. It comes from God. Amen. And you stay focused on God, and you'll be happy all day long. Glory. To, come on, give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Like I said, that didn't cost you anything. That's free. Praise God. Let me leave you with some announcements. T Tuesday night prayer meeting at 7 at p.m. Those that come and gather around these altars and, and uh, seek the face of God, you're more than welcome. Amen. It starts at 7 p.m. Women's ministry meets Sunday, 8 a.m. on Zoom. And men's ministries meet on Thursdays at 6.30 here at the church. Jeffrey Woods, missionary to the islands of uh, Comoros. Am I saying that right? Yes. I think it's Comoros. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, we'll be with us uh, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at Riverside. Missionaries to Africa, Kevin and Rebecca Rodriguez, will be uh, sharing their hearts with us for our annual Missions Emphasis Sunday on November 14th. Don't forget to set your clocks back one hour Saturday night. Amen? You all got that? Praise the Lord. Or don't do it and just come to Sunday school. That's right. Yeah, and you can come to Sunday school without changing the clock. You come anyway. Amen. We, we're having a great time, both on Zoom with Nada and uh, 
Also, uh, you know, adults, whether you're married or single, you can come and it starts at 9.15. We're in the book of Ephesians, and uh, we're just having a great time just uh, looking into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Don't forget to set your, oh, I just said that. Riverside Prayer Team, ready to pray for you. Email prayer at riversideag.com or text to 978-873-PRAY. We're ready uh, and, and more than willing to pray for your needs if you'll just let us know uh, what is going on. Amen? Pastor's going to come. Amen. Praise God. We continue our uh, Kids Sunday. We've got another special treat for us. At this time, Bentham Lorius is going to come and share with us. Oh, they fill it up? Then to my brother, take your time. Today, today I'll be honoring the Lord by saying Psalm 91, safety of abiding in the presence of God. And it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall del deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pervious pestilence. He shall cover you with, with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His shoes shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, in the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any pledge come near your dwelling. But you shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall treat upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Praise God. Wasn't that great? Yes. Encourage his heart. Amen. Praise God. Praise him. Wasn't that, oh, that was awesome. Praise the Lord. You know, it just it reminds me of a, 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 an old gentleman that was coming to church. And uh, believe it or not, he memorized the whole book of Isaiah. The whole book. Uh, it was amazing. I was, I was blown away. I said, I can't believe this. But uh, tremendous. Brother Chase. I don't know if you, uh, maybe not, but Brother Chase is just a great uh, old gentleman. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, we're going to take our offer for BGMC. Amen. Boys and girls, um, you know, the mission where it, the boys bring their, their dimes and nickels and pennies and, and they got a little yellow barrel, or at least some do. We used to give them out. You probably still have some. Anyways, we're going to take up that offering. And that's literature that's given to children all over, you know, all over the world so they can, you know, learn about Jesus. So it's a great, great thing. And so you want to give to that. Uh, it, it's, it's a very worthy cause. Amen. How they're going to know unless somebody tells them, amen? So praise the Lord. So if you're ready, children, just come and, and, and grown-ups, I hear some shaking going on here. <laughs> amen. So, praise the Lord. Pennies and times and nickels. That's great stuff. So come on, let's get out of your seats and just give, amen? Praise the Lord. Kids of all ages, yes. come on down. This money is going to go to missionaries all over the world. Last year, the Assemblies of God kids raised over $7 million wow. through their change and dollar bills and nickels and pennies, all counted up over $7 million.
to help missionaries spread the word of God all around the world. If you don't have, if you'd like a BGMC barrel uh, and you don't have one, uh, then uh, speak to uh, uh, Brother Mario or Sister Martha uh, on a Sunday and they'll be happy to get one for you. On behalf of my missionaries who are friends all over the world, I say thank you very much. Praise God. Is that getting heavy? All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the day where it's going to take two people to hold it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Here it is. Here it is. Glory. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe Nada is going to come at this time. Women's ministry, praise, praise the Lord. She works hard. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are between the ages of 18 to 125, raise your hand and you're female. <laughs> so um, Evelyn and Janice are going to come around and give you a piece of paper that is for me to get to know you and connect with you. Women's ministry is going on a new direction um, through so much prayer through the pandemic. Um, I have been asking God for a new direction for the ministry. And so I came across the story of Peter when he was contacted because there was a woman in Joppa who passed away and the women were um, crying because she had been a woman that served the community. And so Peter came and went into her room and prayed for her. And the story goes that her name was Tabitha which in Greek is called Dorcas, and he called her out, and, he ra and she raised um, from her bed that she had passed. And so the story is that the women in the neighborhood talked about the good she had done for the women in the neighborhood. They didn't talk about how she looked, what her house had, the car that she drove, the hair she had or none of that, but how she invested herself in helping. So our ministry is going under the new name of Dorcas Ministry. And to do that, I need each and every one of you to be involved in it. Because it is not my ministry. It's God's ministry. And as women in the church, we play a big part. Because God created men and said, hmm, it's not good for him to be alone. So I will give him a helper. And so that's why we are here. So the paper that you're getting, please fill out that information. I would love to connect with you. There are many of you that know me, but those of you who do not know me, I want to pray with you, connect with you, and let's partner up in, um, into ministry together. I want to bring you into the fold of what this is. There's a lot of new things coming. Our women's Bible class um, is going to start back up. In, 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 one, in our new room in the back at 915, if not next Sunday, the following Sunday. Um, we just finished the story of Rahab in Sunday school class. Those of you who were in that study, raise your hand. We learned a lot from a prostitute um, and what God can do when he restores the life, no matter where you come from. Um, next week, we start our study, and the title is Watch Your Mouth. So if you want to join us on that, um, the information of the Zoom invite is there. Join us in the morning. We are growing and pressing on to get to know Jesus and touch the hem of his garment. So I would like you to please fill out that form before you leave today. Leave it with me. If you know a woman that's not here, pass it around because we want to connect with you and let's partner up and do something for God's kingdom um, and for our church. Um, so thank you for doing that. 
Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is, in October throughout the United States, we take a Sunday to honor and celebrate Pastor Appreciation Day. And today is that Sunday where we are going to celebrate and honor Pastor Dan and Pastor Dick. So I want to call Pastor Dan and Christine and Pastor Dick and Mickey to come to the front because this morning we're going to take a few minutes to honor the leaders that God has given us. And I, leading people is not easy. No matter where you do it, in the church or in the secular world. I'm always looking for things on a good quality of a leader. I do that at work, but I grew up in the church, and I remember um, that our pastors were like, like our second fathers. And so um, we grew up jumping and doing all that stuff in our pastor's home. So for me, I, I grew up seeing that pastors hurt, and they have losses. And you may not know this, but last year and this year have been very difficult years for Pastor Dan and Christina and Pastor Dick and Mickey. And through it all, they come every Sunday and they pour out themselves to us. And that's difficult to do when you're hurting. And many times we don't see them hurting because they have the warm and the loving smile um, and they bring the scriptures to us. But in looking the qualities of a leader, I was reading during the week, um, and I came across to this, the seven core character qualities of a Christian leader. And one of them is says a Christian leader is categorized by love, by humility, by obedience, integrity, honesty. And so I thought, thank God we have those here, because to be a man of God is not an easy thing. And to possess those qualities is even more difficult in the world that we live in today. And I always say that God called me to this church, and the day the gospel is not preached here, I'm out. So I've been here 32 years because the gospel is always preached. And so we are blessed to have Pastor Dan and Christina. We are blessed to have Pastor Dick and Mickey. We love them. We pray for them because they are not perfect, they are human, but they are our shepherds. And so we're taking this time today to honor them. And I want to call the men's ministry, Sayer, that's coming. We want to present them with just a little talking of our love for you, you, women's ministry, um, youth ministry, Ramona, and um, children's ministry, all guys representing Mario and Martha because they couldn't be here together. And we are going to just give you just a little token of our love for you, um, just to let you know how much we love you and how much you mean to our church. And it is not kissing up, it's really that we, 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 we love what you do through the hurt, through the pain, um, because it's, we know it's not easy. We know that even when you're in pain, you are pouring out and giving. And so all the leaders of our ministry we wanted to bless you and we pray that you enjoy those little talkings. And many of you who brought things and you put it out there, um, Pastor will get it. Before you leave today, we have cupcakes outside. So grab a cupcake um, and make sure you check our pastor's hands and you um, tell them how much you appreciate them. Um, I'm going to have um, Sayer pray for Pastor Dick and Mickey, and then I want to, and then Greg to pray for Pastor Dan and, and Christina. Um, we know that you, through it all, serve, and it's a high call. It is a high call. And so we are here to tell you that we pray for you, we honor you, through your heart, we feel it. And we're here to support you, as God calls us to do. So, Saya, if you want to.
Good morning. Uh, on behalf of the men's ministry, the mighty men of faith, the trustees, the usher ministry, uh, we, we appreciate you both, Pastor Dick, Pastor Dan. And can all the men, can you please stand up? All the men that are standing up now represents your armor bearers. We are your armor bearers, the men, the, the men's, men in this church. We support you. We're here for you. Uh, we're here to encourage you. We're here to, to watch your back. And I'd just like to pray for our pastors. Lord, we thank you for our pastors, Lord. We thank you for giving them the hearts to be shepherds and giving them the word and the Holy Spirit to share with this congregation, with our church. Lord, we just thank you for all that they've done for the Riverside Assembly of God, the ministries in this church. We thank you for their lives. Thank you for their wives. Thank you for the blessing, Lord that you've given us. And Pastor Dick, Pastor Dan, we appreciate you both. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's lift our hands in prayer for Pastor Dick, or Pastor Dan, I'm sorry. Heavenly Father, we come before you as one as one family, Father, as one voice, giving you thanks and praise for not just what you've done, but for who you are. We thank you for this man, heaven, this man that sits before you, Father. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his testimony. We thank you for his sacrifice, Father, because he has sacrificed much to be with us, to be our leader, to be our shepherd, as Christina has and Samuel, I ask, Father, that you keep your hand of protection upon their lives. That protection is because they, they chose to lead and to teach. That protection is needed more than anything else. It's them that's attacked first, and it's them that are called to that, that calling and uh, will be judged accordingly. We thank you. We ask that you place your hand of healing upon Pastor Dan all the ailments that he has in his body, that he won't need any further surgery or any type of therapy or anything like that. We speak the blood over his life, Father, the blood that was shed upon that cross for our healing, our salvation, our forgiveness. We ask, Father, for your word to be done, to be carried out, your will to be done in his life and in the lives of his family. And we thank you for bringing him to us. You could have brought him anywhere else, Father, but you brought him to us. You knew what we needed and when we needed it, and we needed this mighty man of faith then, and we need him today. Continue your work in his life. Continue, Father. Continue, Father. Continue, Father. Continue, Father. Continue, Father. In the precious and almighty name of our Lord and Savior, of Pastor Dan's Lord and Savior, of every one of us, Father, we give you thanks, praise. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Let me just say on behalf of Pastor Dick and myself, Thank you very much. We appreciate uh, uh, your, uh, your love for us, uh, this sign of appreciation. Let me just say, that yes, we do sacrifice, but it is a joyful sacrifice. Uh, I, I'm thankful to God for bringing us, uh, for Dick and I, to be here with you, uh, to be among such wonderful people. And we, just as uh, you showed your appreciation to us, let me just say we appreciate you. 
Uh, and we love you, and we're, we're, we're very thankful for where God is, has, has placed us. All right, next we have, who's, who's next, Melchior? Yes. yes, Melchior. Melchior, come on up, my friend. Yes. Today, I'll be saying Psalm 23, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me through the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all days in my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now we're going to take up another offering. This one is for kids, children's ministry. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, uh, our children are uh, very valuable. Can you can you say amen? And uh, and uh, you know, we just want to, you know, they're a blessing to us. But most of all, as we teach them about Jesus Christ and they grow up and they follow Christ, and that's what the world needs. It needs. More, not that we're better than anyone else, but it needs more of God's people to be that influence in a very dark world. Amen. And I thank God that this church is more than willing to train up our children. Parents need to train their children at home. That's, that's where it starts. But then you've got the church, amen, and we want to bring forth the word of God to them. And I, I thank God for the leaders. And I thank God what was going on. But, you know, everything that we do, Takes money. That's the ball. It really does. We, you know, want to buy gifts, whatever you want to do. It, you know, it doesn't. Too bad it doesn't fall off. You know, like rain, It'd be great. We'd have a lot of money if we if it was like rain, but it's not. So we're going to have a, a mid, uh, kids ministry offering right now. So praise the Lord, ushers, if you'll come. Praise God, and uh, we're just going to give, and so that we can continue to uh, uh, put on programs and do what we do for our children. Amen. Praise the Lord. Got a song? Pray. Thank you. Father, we ask, oh God, that you would just uh, bless this offering, oh Lord God, uh, multiply it, Lord, that uh, we'll have uh, plenty in the coffers, oh Lord God, to continue to minister to our children, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.
of one of our kids who uh, uh, ministered today and you'd rather not have your child on the video uh, that's going to be posted on YouTube, just let me know uh, after service and we'll be sure to edit that out. A couple of announcements I have before I share with you very briefly. Uh, One is uh, don't forget the membership renewal that we have outside. Long table, everybody's name down. If you are a member, an official member of the church, Uh, Please, if you want to continue to be an official member, please just sign your name next to your name, put your X down, do whatever it takes, and uh, and we'll be able to get that done quickly. Also, how many of you enjoyed the drama presentation last week about C.S. Lewis? Well, I've got a treat. There is a movie coming out this week. For It'll be in the theater only two days, Wednesday and then Sunday night, November 7th uh, is going to be a showing of a movie called The Reluctant Convert. It's the story of C.S. Lewis and how he came to Christ. If you are interested in seeing this movie as a group, we have purchased a row of seats. Uh, So if you're interested, we're going to charge you, it's usually $12.50 at the movie theater. We're going to, if you will be willing to come, $10 $10 for you to come and come and see that movie. That's going to be Sunday night, next Sunday at 5.30 p.m. The Reluctant Convert is going to be at the movie theater, the AMC on the Loop. So if you're interested in seeing that uh, and, and taking one of these, there's, there's only 17 spots. So, and, and, and my family's already taken three. So if you are interested in coming to see that, please uh, come and see me. Uh, after service, and I'll be happy to put your name down. You don't have to give me the money right away, uh, but uh, at least get your name uh, name down. Or if you just have questions about it. There was a pastor that received a phone call from a man in distress. It wasn't a man that the pastor knew personally, but he was known around the community. He was an excellent architect. And the pastor, uh, and he was in distress, and the pastor agreed to meet him at the architect's office. And when the pastor was shown in, the architect was on the phone, and he motioned for the pastor, come, sit down, sit down. But for 10 more minutes, this architect continued on his phone with his construction foreman. Finally, the phone call was ended, and the architect apologized for his busyness. And there was no initial, initial small talk. He'd, his eyes began to fill with tears, and he shared why his heart was in distress. It seems that his two children had taken the path of rebellion. His 19-year-old son was in trouble with the law. His 16-year-old daughter was expecting and hadn't spoken to her parents for weeks. I grew up in the church, pastor, said the architect. But I was so busy, I never returned after my children were born. Will you speak to them, pastor? Will you tell them about Jesus and the importance of faith? The pastor looked seriously at the architect and said, I will, but... It's going to be hard. Why will it be hard? You're a pastor, the architect said. The pastor's eyes fell upon some rolled up papers on the desk, and he said, what are those? The architect replied, those are blueprints. The pastor said, what comes first, the blueprints or the construction? The blueprints first, of course, the architect replied. So you wouldn't try to start constructing a building without the blueprints? No, of course not. What you're asking me to do is to, the pastor said, what you're asking me to do is to build without the blueprints. Your children have grown up with no planning and no reference to faith. It will be difficult for me to try to build something in them with no blueprint of faith ever having been drawn. It's not impossible, for with God nothing is impossible. But it would have been much easier had they been raised with a blueprint of faith 
in God to build upon. People, are, our children are our most important responsibility. It is our responsibility to draw a blueprint of faith into their lives. This is the job of parents, and this is the job of our church. We need to show kids that Jesus loves them, and we need to show them that, that we love them as well. Kids have different brains than us. They have, well, let's pray before I get in trouble. Father, anoint your word. Help us understand and see the importance of our children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So kids' brains are wired differently from ours. That's a it's scientific fact. Plus, they lack the experience that we have. They don't share our vo- same, all the same vocabulary. So it's no surprise that sometimes kids don't understand what we said. Or rather, maybe they misunderstand what we say. So when we say, I love you, to a child, it makes them feel nice. But let's face it, their concept of love is not quite formed yet, is it? I mean, sometimes I think my concept of love isn't informed. I'm still learning. You know, I use, use the example when, you know, when you fall in love with your spouse, you're like, oh, this, this is the ultimate love. And then you're getting married, and, you, you, I, and I saw her walking down the aisle. I said, oh, this, this is it. This is the ultimate of love. And then my son was born, and I held him in my arms for the first time. And I said, I can't believe there's even more love. But for kids, they're not going to quite understand when you say, I love you. They need to see love in action, and that includes in the words that we say. So it's vitally important that we as parents and teachers build loving relationships with our kids. A child who feels, a lo- who feels loved is going to be more attentive. They're going to be more likely to accept correction more likely to understand the love of the Father. So it is incumbent on us, it is dependent on us, to find ways to let kids know that they're loved. So today I want to give you four quick things that you can say that mean I love you to kids. And here's the first thing. I'm proud of you. Children want to please. They want to have their attempts to please they want to have their attempts to please you recognize. Mom, 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 look, 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 look what I can do. Look what I can do. When you express your pleasure at the things they do, they feel loved. So we need to take special care to make sure our kids hear that kind of affirmation. Great job. You did great today. I'm proud of you. Those kind of affirmations tell kids that we love them. And you know what? God shows his love to us in the same way. I want to hear God's affirmation when I enter his eternal kingdom. Matthew 25, 21 says, His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. When we have lived our lives for Christ, when we have persevered, through the final chapter of our lives, God's going to say, I'm proud of you. Well done. And that's just one way God says, I love you. Another thing we say to, that kids hear is, I love you, is, let me help you with that. Children can get very frustrated with things when they aren't working. Have you ever been frustrated? Have you ever been frustrated when things just aren't working well? Imagine somebody coming up taking all that frustration away from you. You can do that for a child. When you do this for a child, they see someone who cares about them, someone who's willing to put in time with them, somebody who cares about them succeeding. Now, there's, of course, going to be two times when kids want to do things on their own. That's fine. That's part of the growing process. But when we say, let me help you, when you take that time to offer them assistance, you're expressing your love to them. And once again, God does something similar for us. He is our helper. He is our provider. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
That right hand, that help is a sign that God cares for us. He wants us to succeed. He was, he is, and he always will be willing to put in the time to help us. And when he offers us this help, God is telling us that he loves us. A third thing we can say that kids will hear as I love you is, do you want to play? When I was, I was a school principal for a while, and the kids would go out to recess, and every once in a while, I would go out to recess just to uh, hang out with them a little bit, and I'd be talking to the teachers, and they'd say, Mr. Stanley, Mr. Stanley, come, cha- come, la- come let us chase you. And I'd be, no, no, that, I, I'm, I'm a principal. I, come, let us chase you. No, no, I can't. <laughs> and then they would run after me, and they'd say, get Mr. Stanley, get Mr. Stanley. What a, they loved to play. They were playing already. But what a treat it was for an authority figure to play with them. When my son was little, he often asked, will somebody play with me? Christina or I would go and play with him with cars or trains. But I started looking for opportunities to ask my son the same question. Hey, Sam, Samuel, do you want to play? Do you want to play? Ch- children aren't going to lose respect for you just because you're willing to play with them. They see, when they see that, they see someone who wants to spend time with them. They see someone who enjoys their company. It makes them feel wanted. It makes them feel appreciated. Kids are worth the investment of time to play with them. It is a sign of your love to them. Now, does God say, let's play? One time Jesus sent out his disciples to do ministry. They came back and reported about how they had preached the good news and miracles had been done. And this is what Jesus said, Mark 6, 31. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Jesus was saying to them, Let's go spend some time together, just us. Let's take a break from the hustle and bustle of ministry, and let's refresh ourselves. Listen, God still loves spending time with us. Hey, Dan, let's just you and I spend some time together. His willingness to spend time with me is a sign of his love for me. The final thing we can say to kids that they hear is, I love you, may seem strange at first, but it's, I'm sorry. There was a popular saying in the 1970s, love means never having to say you're sorry. That was one of the dumbest things I'd ever heard. Love leads to repentance. When we've done something that hurts someone that we love, love leads us to repentance. Love means saying you're sorry. Saying I'm sorry sends a message. It says my relationship to you is important. It says my relationship to you is so important, I want to fix it because I know I've hurt you. I want to get things back the way they are. That's what I'm sorry means. Saying I'm sorry is a message of love especially if you've hurt a child's feelings, even a little, children hear our apologies as a sign of love for them. Now, obviously, God never has to say, I'm sorry. God is perfect. He's holy. He cannot sin. So any offense we take is because of our own sin, not because of his. But God still expresses his willingness to fix our relationship with him, even though the fault in the relationship is ours. Romans 5, 8 says, But God showed his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we were at fault, God was willing to sacrifice in order to prepare, the rela- to repair the relationship. So let me conclude by asking you a couple of questions here. Are our children important? Do you believe that it is important to show our children we love them? Do you believe it's important for us to show them an example of the Father's love? Why are we struggling to have workers in our children's church and we worship? Guys, I'm coming to you out of love. But these precious children, they're God's gift to us. But they're also our responsibility. You know, when we are up here and we dedicate a child at church, 
It's the dedication of the family, but it's also the dedication of our church family. We pledge, we stand up and pledge to that family that we are going to help in the spiritual upbringing of that baby boy or that baby girl. But we are struggling to fulfill that pledge. For our we worship for our youngest, we're only able to do that a couple of Sundays a month. And poor Mario and Martha are, are away from service too much because they have to be doing so much of the children's church. Jesus loves the little children. And so I ask you today, can you help us to express that love? Are you willing to, even just once a month, to make a commitment to, not to me, but to our kids? I'm not looking for people who are motivated now, but then they don't fulfill their commitment. I'm looking for men and women and teens People of God who see the need and are willing to take the time to help meet that need. I'm asking my wife, Christina, to be in the lobby at the end of the service, as well as Olga. Are you, are you going to be out there? Olga is going to be out there as well to take names of anybody that would say, I'm willing to at least come and see and see if this is something that God can use for me. Sometimes we have this mystical idea of following God's will. God's got to tell me in a dream. God's got to show me in a scripture. Sometimes following God's will is just seeing the need and saying, I'm going to help. Sometimes following God's will, in fact, maybe most times, is saying there's somebody who, who needs me. I'm going to go and help. So I ask you today, when Christina and Olga are out there, Christina for the We Worship, which are, are the youngest. Olga for the uh, uh, older kids who are, what, 6 through 11? 6 through 11. We need some helpers. We need some teachers. If you're willing to show your love to the youngest members of the Riverside family, I encourage you to stop by and see them. Christina, raise your, raise your hand. Olga, raise your hand. They'll be out in the lobby ready to take down your name. Me, I'm going to be out in the lobby too. Uh, I'm going to be ready for anybody that wants uh, to buy one of those tickets uh, or, say, or uh, save their seat for, uh, for the movie next Monday. But I just ask you to help us as a church to show our love to them just as we have shown, as, as God has shown his love to us. Would you pray with me? Father, we love our kids. We thank you for their good hearts. We thank you for their willingness to learn, their purity. This is the time, God, that they are so open for the things of God. Please, Lord, help us as a church to build into their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Christine and Olga, if you'll head out, and Pastor Dick, would you come and give us some uh, word of encouragement and dismissal? Lord. Amen. A word of encouragement. What I encourage you to do is keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and finisher of your faith. The psalm says, I don't look to the left or to the right, but keep your eyes on him. Baby. Amen. He's the one that's going to lead you, guide you, comfort you. Everything you need is resident Amen. in him. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that we've sensed in our Thank you for our children. God, uh, we just want to give you praise and glory, Lord God. And Lord, we're asking, Lord, bless your people real good. Give them a double portion of your blessing as we leave. But Lord, may our conversation be centered on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're free to go.